Amen. He is worthy of praise. That's the amazing thing about his presence. It is the only place that you can go where you will be changed. It's not a possibility. It's not a I hope so. It is an absolute truth that in the presence of God, you will become new. You can't stay the same. If you have truly experienced the living God, you cannot get up from that moment and be the same pace, person you were five seconds ago. It is impossible. He compels you to do better, to be better, to want more. You cannot be satisfied with where you're at in the moment because his holiness compels you to want better for you as an act of worship unto him. He died so that you could live. How dare we sit? How dare we stay silent in a place that says, well, it was just a thing. It was everything. And his presence compels us to be different. Oh, my goodness. There's nothing like his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. I just have a few announcements this morning. I, uh, huh. You know, the devil is a liar. There might be snow outside. And, you know, people are like, oh, we don't want to come. I understand. I get it. I get it. But if he brought you here, he ain't giving up on you now. Amen. And so I just love that God is caring of every detail, not just the important stuff, the very insignificant stuff. God says, I see you. I've got a plan and I want you. I want to be involved with you. It's such a special place. There is no one that knows that feeling of acceptance. He wants us. He wants us. He sees us and says, I can't wait to spend time with you. It's amazing. Okay, announcements. Um, I feel like I lost my list. Um, so we, we do have a faith kitchen coming up in February, February 27th. So next week, next Sunday, right after service, we're going to be having a faith kitchen meeting. So if you want faith kitchen, faith kitchen is our soup kitchen that we have here at City Reach Church. Uh, we offer uh, right now our soup kitchen is going to be serving meals um, the fourth Saturday of every month, starting February 27th is going to be our first one in this location. So uh, the week prior on February 20th, we're going to be meeting here at 11 o'clock to go door to door again. Uh, just hand out flyers. And then on the 27th at 11 o'clock, we serve a hot meal. And so um, we want to have a meeting as far as what Faith Kitchen looks like, what that, um, what that looks like for City Reach and, and for our community. And we want you to be a part. And so you can help to serve and you can invite people, any people. Um, it's not just, we all need to eat. And I, I love food. So if there's food, I promise you I'm going to be there. And we cook good. You know, one of the passions of my heart that I have shared with Julie, who heads up our Compassion Ministries, is we were serving uh, with other churches in the community at a street um, ministry years and years ago. It was called, uh, what was it called? Midnight Ministries, it was called. And at midnight on Friday nights, sometimes Saturdays, we would head out at um, 6th and Franklin and feed people. And I was getting so frustrated because the menu was always hot dogs, hot dogs and mac and cheese because it's easy. And I was like, I refuse. I would never feed my family hot dogs every week. I refuse to ever serve another hot dog. OK, if we have like kids events or like a carnival, OK, that's a little different, that, you know. But when we feed people, we feed people. I want you to eat and be fed. And if you want 16 plates, you know, you'll get it, but uh, <laughs> watch yourself. Um, but we'll send, we send, I know it ain't shady, but we'll, but, uh, we'll send you home with food because we want our people to know that we love you, we care about you, and we want you to be fed. And so anyway, Faith Kitchen Meeting next Sunday after church. We'll be having a children and youth ministry uh, the, the week after that. We'll give you those details. So just letting you know so you can plan accordingly. Um, and is that thing ready for me? Okay, so I want you to take out your phone, and if, so we don't pass offering baskets here. I talked about it, uh, I talk about it every week. We, you, you already know what God asked you to do. If this, if this uh, church just ran on um, 
It does run on hope, and it does run on a prayer, but it runs on you uh, and me and our ability to honor God with uh, our tithes and offerings as an act of worship. And so our baskets are up front. Uh, if you want to give, the baskets are here. There's also a box in the front and the back. But um, if you have a phone and you have a camera, I want you to first open up your camera, and I want you to take a selfie, and I want you to get as many people sitting behind you as you possibly can. Terrible selfie taker, but I just just humor me. Hold on, my phone set up right. Okay, yep. Everybody that you can behind you, take a selfie. This is terrible. I'm a terrible, terrible selfie person. <laughs> what? I yeah, that's always my problem. I do need longer arms. <laughs> Yeah, I did one. Okay. So after you got your selfie, just hold on to it because it was just fun just to do that. Get you, let you use your phone. But then, what? Oh, and you can post it, post it on Facebook. You can go to City Reach Reading and post it there and on your page and invite people to come and be like, this is the crazy we do at Sunday Morning Church. And then um, what you can do is you can, if you focus your camera on one of the screens next to me, uh, to the QR code, the idea is that you... You focus your camera, uh, so, and then you'll see a link pop up at the top. If you see the link pop up at the top, you can click on the link. You might need to get, you shouldn't have to get too close. It should be able to just pull the, the image in. And the reason I'm telling you this is because we have a new way to be able to give at City Reach Church. So you can bring your offering when you come on Sunday mornings, but if you, um, if you want to give, Using, and we encourage you to give online. Giving online allows you to never skip a beat. Because just because you ain't here don't mean God ain't here. And just because you don't come don't mean the bills don't have to be paid. If it were that easy, uh, we, just, we could just continue to do online service. But God's got great things for us here. And so if you need help with this, if you can't get the link, we can help you out after service. We have other access. But what that link will do is then that will take you to an online form where you can set up your online giving right on our webpage. Um, and so you can give weekly, you can give monthly, you can set it up to reoccur so you never have to worry about it ever again. It'll just uh, do that for you and you'll never miss a beat. And so again, if you need help setting it up, we can uh, talk to you after service and help you do that. And uh, we'll get you set up and... It's just great. Technology is amazing. It's overwhelming, but it's amazing. Not for you. If it doesn't work for you, I got you. Androids don't work, right? All right. No worries. We'll get you set up. <laughs> all right. I think that's all I have, Pastor. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and that's just how that goes. No, wait, dude, look, I'm going to tell on him a little bit because he's been working with a, a Mac computer because, like, he's an Apple guy. Um, but he, he's been working with a, a Apple laptop. He don't know what he's doing. He, he is a Windows guy, and he's like, I don't know what this, oops, that wasn't supposed to delete. So don't let him fool you. <laughs> this isn't the right time for me to pick on my wife because she calls it an Apple computer. Isn't it called a Mac? Yeah, Mac. I was just checking. Good morning, City Reach. Good morning. Hmm. I said before and I'll say it again, I'm so glad that you're here today. I don't believe in, I don't believe in coincidences and I don't believe, I, I just, I believe that you're here for a purpose. You're not here by accident. I do know one thing and that is that you could have been any place else this morning to include your bed. Nice, warm, comfy <laughs> bed. But for whatever reason you're not, you're here instead. I don't know why. I do believe that God's got a word for you because you're here. And for those that are watching online, welcome to City Reach Live broadcast. I hope that you, uh, you got all the messages and everything else. Um, our faith kitchen is really important to us because it's more than just a soup kitchen. It's actually all anything that involves food here at City Reach. So that involves giving away food. That involves uh, the pantry. And, it's, and, and here's the thing. And we're, we're trying to fix some of the things that we say. You know, it's natural for us to say soup kitchen. It really isn't. It's a community meal. It's for everybody. You know, when you say soup kitchen, you, immediately you think that, oh, it's about 
those people. Well, we ain't got those people. Those are our people. <laughs> that's us. That's we. It's not they. That's how we roll here. Okay. So I just wanted to fix that. Yep. So um, I knew that. That's the reason why I jumped to that. Part of our um, faith kitchen today, uh, of, of all days, coincidence, right? Everybody's running to the store to get bread. Well, guess what? Before you leave today, go into the, the fellowship hall and grab yourself a loaf of bread because we got some bread to give away. Amen. <laughs> so grab yourself a loaf. If, if, you're, if, if, if you're like anybody else, you go in there, you grab yourself a loaf, you wait till everybody leaves the building, and then you take whatever's left over because you can't stay here in church. Okay? And um, I was told that, that I need to get back on my eating right, so the bread can't come to my house either. So. told you last week that God has not changed the way he feels about you. He hasn't changed the way he feels about you. And yet, what's interesting about the way that God feels about you, that may not change, but yet he wants us to change the way we love. The one word, the one thought, the one idea that I want you to leave today is just one word. I try not to make it very complicated because I'm not a very complicated kind of person. I'm simple. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have big degrees and things. I don't. I'm simple kind of guy. So I just want to leave you with one word, and that word is unconditional. Somebody say unconditional. If you have your Bibles with you, go ahead and turn to First John, First John, chapter four, verse seven. It don't matter. You don't need your Bible. You don't need your Bible because the words are going to be up top. Just for your reference, I do read out of the New King James. It's my, it's a version I feel uh, that, that I enjoy the most. When I read it, it makes me feel like, like I know stuff. Ears. Hearts. Mm, Father, we just confess right now that our ears are open and our hearts are ready for this word. So, Lord, I pray that this word would go so deep into our hearts. And it would be the seed that will produce. And let that seed produce a fruit. And let that fruit be called love. And let us be the people of God that give away that fruit called love. In your name we pray. And God's people said. Amen. Verse 7 says, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He knows. He does not. He who does not love does not know God. For God is love. I could just stop right there. There's a mouthful said right there. At least for me there is. Verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that he might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that we but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation of our sins. Bless you. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also, we also, we also, we also ought to love, we also, I should stop right there. The word itself speaks for itself. I want us to be mindful. If the Bible has given us an instruction, the reason for that instruction is because we need that instruction. Let me say that again for you because sometimes people don't quite get it the way they need to get it. Uh, um, you're given instruction. People look at the Bible as a, as a do's and don'ts and, 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 and laws that need to be followed and not followed. And let me tell you that the Bible is an instruction manual for your life. And if the instructions tell you that this is the type of oil that you need to put in your car, then put that type of oil in your car. You don't put transmission fluid inside the... You don't put oil where water goes. Come on, David. David's our in-house mechanic, just saying If we were already doing what we were supposed to be doing the way that we were supposed to be doing it, there would be no need for instructions. 
How many times have you read in scripture how to go to the bathroom? Nobody wants to talk to me? Nobody's sure, and that's the problem. I can tell you that in the Bible, there's instructions on how to go to the bathroom. Nobody wants to talk to me. In the Old Testament, is everything okay? It's okay. It's okay. Relax. 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 We'll get some people to help you out. It's okay. Doreen, stay. Take care of it. Stay with me. Just look at me, wave at me, let me know he's okay. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, whatever is ailing that young boy, I pray right now that you would touch his body, Lord God, that you would heal him from the inside out, Lord God. That, Lord, we know that he is beloved of you, he is treasured by you, and we know that, God, you are in control. We thank you for this opportunity to pray. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, (laughs) back to instructions. Actually, in the Bible, there's an instruction that uh, in the Old Testament where God is very specific about where to go to the bathroom. He says, don't, don't, don't do it inside the camp. God didn't want to be around your junk, your crap, literally. And people look at that and, you know, they, they, they take it a different way. And I look at that and I say, that was an instruction so that you wouldn't get sick. It was, don't. Now the saying is, uh, don't crap, uh, don't, don't crap where you eat. Basically, that's what it means. You go to the bathroom away from where you're going to live and sleep and those kinds of things. And that's what the instructions was. It was necessary. If you're taking notes today, I want you to understand first one. Our love for the world is conditional. Our love for the world is conditional. Everybody's looking at me like, no, not me. I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm holy. (laughs) But your love is conditional. I got the blood covering me. Yeah, but your love is conditional. As long as you don't tell me how to live, I'll love you. As long as you do what I want you to do, I'll love you. As long as you accept me like I am, I'll love you. As long as um, you don't hurt me, I'll love you. Uh, These are just the things you've told me. (laughs) That's what you expect from me as your pastor, right? Don't judge me. Don't hurt me. Don't. This is how you feel about your relationship. As long as you behave in a manner that is pleasing to me. This is what the pastor tells you. (laughs) I'll love you. Isn't that how sometimes it feels? We were in a Bible study. We were in our Bible study. And um, if I get this wrong, Kevin, holler it back at me. But one of the, one of the, the, the discussions we were having and, and the statement that was made is that love, when you, when you feel loved, you feel safe to be yourself. Is that close enough? Close enough? When you know that you're loved, you can be yourself because you know it's okay to act up. We also talked about how it is, why it is that we hurt people. And the people that we hurt the most are the ones that we love the most. Nobody wants to talk to me. Well, the reason for that is is because you feel safe with the people that love you. So you can be yourself. You can be a jerk and know that there's going to be some forgiveness forgiveness there. The reality of that is is that if you realize that, then maybe we should try a little harder not to hurt the people we love. Come on, somebody. But the instructions that the Bible gives us is contrary to how we love. Either we're wrong or... Or the Bible is wrong. The Bible tells us to do this, but we do that. We have all kinds of, 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 of circumstances. When we turn around and say, forgive someone, the first thing out of our mouth is, but. But. No, no, I get it, I get it, I get it. God heals today, but God is a God of signs, wonders, and miracles, but 
Nothing is impossible for God, but we full of excuses. If you got your Bible with you, if you're still there in 1 John 4, just go ahead and go one click backwards. Let's go to 1 John 3. 1 John 3 is actually uh, an interesting scripture because everybody knows John 3.16. How about 1 John 3.16? The Bible says, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Uh, The Bible, (laughs) the Bible, the Bible, the word of God. The Bible says this is the way it should be. It ought to be, but it's not. I'm giving you instructions. The Bible says I'm giving you instructions. God says I'm giving you instructions on how to do it. No buts. I'm giving you the instructions because it's not happening the way I have told you to make it happen. So number two, God turns around and says, I'm going to show you how. Let me tell you, God doesn't just tell you to do stuff. He shows you how to do stuff. Number two, God's love for the world is unconditional. That's the word we're walking away with today. Unconditional. This unconditional, it's different. It, it, it's unheard of. It's, it's, it's uncomprehensible, un- inconceivable. It, it's, there's, they, they, they wrote a song like that, that goes about how great God is. And he uses all these words that are just so overwhelming. God's love is overwhelming because his love is unconditional. Unconditional, for it was without conditions. He has no conditions on his love. When Jesus went to the cross at Calvary, it was without condition. It was without reservation, without reserve, that he he freely gave his life for our sin. See, this is the part where the preacher turns around and says, for your sin. (laughs) As a good fire and brimstone preacher, I like that. It's your sin that you, Jesus went on the cross because of you. Nah, I'm in that too. I'm not excluding myself from heaven. I'm not excluding myself from, 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 from the cross, from the blood. He did it for our sin. Our sin. Without reservation. Freely. And many people Many, and this is what breaks my heart. Many people, even in the church today, don't realize that the love of God is unconditional. Why is it that people in the church, once they get saved, they get sanctified, they get baptized, they get filled with the Holy Ghost, turn around and think they got to work their way into, into God's love, into God's favor? Why? He already loves you. He hasn't changed his mind about you just because you got saved, just because you accepted him as Lord and Savior. I'm talking to the church right now. You would think I was talking to the world, but right now I'm talking to the church. It's the church that needs to hear this message because it's the church that needs to live this message. Unconditional simply means what it sounds like. There is no condition that will either cause us to earn it or deter it. No condition. No condition. And if you've been in church just for a minute, and all you need is a minute, you already know my, my, my next verse. John 3.16. For God so loved the world. And automatically you just go into reciting. it. No pause, no thinking about it. What did I put up there? Yeah, put the whole thing up there for you. Because it's a knee jerk. For God so loved the world. The Greek word here, the world, means cosmos. It's very important to understand this particular thing that God is talking about. It's defined as, this word cosmos, is defined as the ungodly multitude. So God loved the multitude, the ungodly multitude. The whole mass of men alienated from God and therefore hostile to the cause of Christ. 
This is the world that God loves. He loves the heathen. He loves gay. He loves trans. He loves Muslims. He loves Buddhists. He loves tree huggers. Well, no, take that back. There are some Christians that are tree huggers. Um, he loves them all. That is the world that he loves. <laughs> That's the world you came from. I, I, you, can, you can flip it any which way you want to. But there was a time that you had to come to a decision for yourself. Well, I grew up in church. Yeah. <laughs> but did you accept Jesus? Because you ain't going. Let me tell you right now, if you don't notice, you ain't going, you ain't going to heaven on your parents' uh, shirt tails. Coattails, 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 coattails. Thank you. Told you I'm not very. It doesn't say that God loved all the good people. There are good people in this world. Good people do good things. I know some. They're just good people. They're there for the community. They give to the to, to disaster reliefs. They're, they're just good people. Come on, somebody. And they're still going to hell. Nobody wants to talk about it no more. We, we don't want to offend the good people. Wasn't it God? It doesn't say that God loved or that God just loved the Jews. It doesn't just say that, that God just loved the saints. It says, for God so loved the world. No requirement, no condition. No requirement, no condition. You don't have to like him, and he loves you. You don't need to agree with him, but he loves you. I love atheists because they don't even believe in God, and he loves them too. There is no requirement for you to believe in God to realize that God loves you. You don't even. This is tough for a preacher. This is tough for a Bible scholar. I'm gonna give, give, give me all your comments. Send them, send them to me on Facebook. Send them to me on wherever you want to send them to me because you're, you're not gonna like this one. But I'm gonna tell you, you don't even have to change. And he still loves you. You don't have to. You get to. You don't have to. But you get to. He's not going to leave you the same way he found you. Because he loves you. Hello? Nobody wants to talk about it. Come to church as you are. That's just a slogan that we've, we've come up with in the 21st, 20th century church in the 21st century. Just come as you are. Yeah, come as you are. Please come as you are. Don't leave the way you came. It isn't based on our behavior or attitude towards him. God's love for mankind is universal and unconditional. He loves everyone. Because at one time you were part of the cosmos. That is what makes our God different than all the other so-called gods. Can I say it again, so-called gods? Christianity is uniquely claimed that God's love is free of charge. No strings attached. No other religion makes that claim. The Buddhists, for example, follow an eightfold path to enlightenment. I can't, cast past, I can't count past three. Five if we're talking about wrestling because that's worth three points. Hello? <laughs> Only my wrestlers know that. It's not a free ride for the Buddhists. The Hindus believe in karma. That your actions continually affect the way the world will treat you. That there is nothing that comes to you not set in motion by your actions. I have a hard time with that one. Because there are some things that have happened to some people that had nothing to do with them. Because the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a, there's a concept here about sowing seed and reaping what you sow. Absolutely. That we must follow and understand. But it's not all like that. 
Hello? And in Islam, God is a God of judgment. Not a God of love. You live to appease him. Only Christianity dares, dares to proclaim that God's love is unconditional. An unconditional love that we have no other name to call it but grace. Grace, grace, grace is God's God freely giving to us the gifts of forgiveness, mercy, and love. That's grace. That's grace. So God's love for us is unconditional. Romans 5, if you have your Bible still with you. Click a few chapters to the left. I got to tell you to click or move or swipe because ain't nobody carrying Bibles no more. Everybody's electronic, right? Romans 5, 8 sums it up like this. For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died. Christ died for us. He died for me. I know you church folk. I know you've, some of you have been coming to church your entire life. I shouldn't have to even be talking about this. But we just can't get it right as the church. So I'm not here to tell you something new. Everybody can say amen to all this. Some of us even know how to say oh my. Or oh me. I'm here to help us to begin to grasp this love of God just a little deeper. Just a little deeper. Paul says this. He says, I wanted you to know, I want you to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. I want you to get an understanding of love that is completely, that, that surpasses your understanding of what love really is. If you think you got a clue about God's love, you have been misled. Seems illogical, but the love of God is so designed that we might be always learning and continually grasping after it. Maybe something that you will never even attain. We will never know the depth of God's love completely. And that, to me, is fascinating. Well, if you're goal-driven type of person, this isn't fascinating. Hello? If you're a goal-driven person, you, you want to get to that end. You want to you know what it is to, to have arrived. But his love has no ending. His love is forever. It will endure eternity. It is, by definition, eternal. Okay, take a breath. If you're a little overwhelmed by how awesome God is, if you're still with me and you're still taking notes, hang in there with me. My clock says I'm almost done. Number three, city reaches love. For the world. This is how we're going to do it here. This is how it's going to begin here. It's got to begin with you. It's got to begin with me. It's got to begin with us. And if you're just visiting and you're going to end up someplace else, God bless you. Make sure you do it there too. Because this message isn't just for city reach. But it will start here. Loving the way Jesus loved is the only way we are going to make a difference. It's the only way we're going to make a difference. Let me, it's the only way we're going to make a difference. You're not going to make a difference any other way. You can have, you can have these goals and these charts and these, and these scales, and, and you can have uh, all the resources, and you can have all of this going. 
but it's not going to make a difference. Not real difference. It's really cool when you have all those kinds of things and you have the love of Jesus. Hello? It's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference in our church. It's going to make a difference in our ministry. It's going to make a difference in our lives, in our communities, and in the world. Loving the way Jesus loves. The only way we will make a difference in this broken, hurting, bleeding, diseased, confused, prodigal world is to love the way Jesus loved. We can't do it any other way. Loving your way hasn't been working. Hasn't been working. You want to see City Beach Church grow? I'll take an amen there and a head nod there. I don't want to be alone on this one. Please help me. Don't leave me alone up here. Yeah, I just got done yelling at you. So you don't even know how to you don't even know how to take me now. How can you yell at me one minute and then ask me to join you in the party the next? Anybody? Anybody want to see City Beach Church grow? Because if you don't, you just won't show up next Sunday. That's all. Why do I gotta be on live? You want to see City Beach go to three services? Three weekend services? You want to make a difference? You want to see these things? Because see, you have to understand that when, when we talk about these things, we're not just talking about these things from a, from a place of, of just this church. You have to understand that the impact and the changes that Jesus makes in you and how you make them then an impact on other people changes not just your church. This is nice. Okay, we, 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 get, we get in the four walls and we get nice. We have our fellowship meals and we have our, and we have the this, and we have our Bible studies, we have our prayer meetings. Glory to God. But if it don't break out of the four walls, we won't make a difference anywhere. Especially if you don't break down into your own house. Nobody wants to talk to me now. The only way it's going to make a difference is to learn to love one another the way Jesus loves you. And that love to love everyone, love everyone that comes through these doors. Even if they don't come back. They ain't got to come back. and they ain't, When they walk through doors, when, when visitors walk through the doors, and y'all were the ones who visited, when you walk through the doors, you, no, nobody asked you to sign a commitment card. I know Doreen tried, but you know, hey. <laughs> nobody turned around and said, okay, leave, leave, leave your checkbook routing number here at the door before you go. I know Julie tried, but you know. <laughs> nobody turned around and said, you got to be involved in every ministry that happens at City Beach Church. I know Pastor Joyce tried. But that doesn't really happen. It doesn't happen with Doreen. It doesn't happen with Julie. It doesn't happen with Pastor Joyce. Got to love them as they come through the doors. That doesn't mean Labrador Retriever love either. In my case, if you don't, besides me and Kevin, who else got pit bulls? Oh, and Julie, who else got pit bulls? Anybody got pit bulls? I got, I got this puppy pit bull. I'm sorry, I, I, I regress. But I got, I got this brand new puppy pit bull. And this dog, all he knows how to do is be in my face. And he's, he's like six to seven months old now, so he's big. And he want to be up in my face and in my chest all the time. He think he a Bichon jumping on my lap. When he plops, he plops. And then he gets to licking. And he licks everything. Everything. And you're like, get off my toes, dog. 
I am I'm obviously not talking to dog people. You're probably talking to cat people. I don't know. So when people come through the doors, we want to love them. But we don't want to love them like Labrador Retrievers or Pitbulls. We don't just want to slobber all over them. That's uncomfortable. Unless they need it. That's why masks are pretty cool kind of thinking about it. I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not a big mask person either. But, but they're kind of cool. Because if you see somebody with a mask, that means leave them alone. Hello? If somebody gets up out of here and the first thing they do is put on their mask, don't go trying to hug on them. They don't want you to hug them. Keep your corona to yourself. Too soon? Too soon for corona chokes? No? That's too soon. That's just way too soon. Just way too soon. We need love. We need love in our Bible study. We need love in our faith kitchen. We need love in our prayer gatherings. We need love in our fellowship meals. Come on, somebody. Bring back the fellowship meals. Yes. Brother's hungry right now. We need love in children's ministry. We need love in youth ministry. We need love in men's ministry and women's ministry. We need love inside the four walls so it can burst out of the four walls and we can love our neighbor, love our community, and love this nation. Oh, good God, have mercy on me, but we need love. We need to get out of the way. Get out of yourself. Get away from yourself and start to love. Love them all. Love. Love them even if you don't like them. Love them when they get on your nerves. Love them when they keep talking and you don't want to talk to them no more. Love them. Love them. Love them. Love forgets a person's uh, past and even present sins. It forgets. I know it's hard to forget. I thought that whole forget, forgive thing is, is a God thing. I know that. But when you move in love, you don't have to forget. But you can definitely still love. You love in spite of it. Love considers every person that we come in contact with, especially in the church, under the blood of Jesus. If we treat the unchurched and the unsaved as if they were covered by the blood of Jesus, imagine how much love they would receive from us. But that's not how we treat people. But this is the way City Reach will treat people. I know. Don't come to me. <laughs> don't come to me and say, hey, pastor, don't you know what sin they're involved in? <laughs> Before you open your mouth to me about that, open your heart. Ain't nobody talking to me. Because if you toe to toe to me and you turn around and hear me say that, you're going to be mad. But I'm going to tell you. Don't tell me about somebody else's junk. Don't, 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 don't come to me in a prayer meeting talking about, oh, let's pray for brother so-and-so because you know what last, last night what he did. You turn around and tell me, you know what last night he did. What's going to be my response? Oh, what did he do? That's my response, right? Well, I don't want it to be. I, I'm going to just be real with you. I, I don't want it to be. But you turn around and tell me, oh, did you hear what Brother David did? No, what did he do? <laughs> you should, I, I never hear, I never hear this. Oh, pastor, you should have heard what Brother David did. He was at church all night just praying and the Holy Ghost fell in. And you should have seen, that she, I've never been in an environment. You never hear that stuff. And this isn't the brother David I'm talking about, by the way. It's just, David is an easy name. Open your mouth. Open up your heart. Say to yourself. Don't say it out loud. Say it to yourself. 
I don't care how bad your sin is. I still love you. Say it to yourself. Because if you say that out loud, you might get, put, get punched in the mouth. Hello? Don't accuse somebody of something they don't realize be, that they're in. Let the Holy Spirit reveal that stuff. Unconditional love says, no matter what you've done, I still want to pray with you. I'm still going to pray for you. Say, I still care about you. I still want to help you in your walk with God. In your walk with God. Anywhere that I can. That I can. I can't help you in everything. But in what I can, what I'm able to, I will. Do you know why I'm teaching on this this morning? I'm teaching this because I believe City Reach Church is growing. Not that we will grow. We are growing. We're in this process right now. It is the season that we're in right now. I believe that the church, this church is in a position to reach people like no other church has been in in a long time in this area. I know there's churches down the street and over here and over there. They're doing great things. Always have been. God bless them. They're in maintenance mode. Glory to God. They're in prep mode. That's their season. We're in growth mode. There are things that God is doing here that is absolutely overwhelming to me. I need you and every single one of you because we're in this together. I believe that as we grow, we are all going to be introduced to some new people. New people. People that don't look like you. People that don't talk like you. People that don't speak like you. People that don't walk like you. And people that may actually sin better than you. Ain't hey, nobody want to talk to me now. No. No, 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 no. Let's not talk about that. E -e. You said the S word. Don't say the S word. Involved in things that we may or may not have ever considered being involved in. Those are the people we're going to meet. Let me rephrase that. I say we because I believe that you're with me. But let me just change it just for a second. Use the pronoun I. Those are the people I want to meet. I'm thankful for the church and I'm thankful for those of you that are saved. I'm thankful for those that are going to be joining us in this work. And they have already joined us in this work. But the people I want are the ones, live, uh, the ones that, that live both along the river and in this community. The ones that live in, 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 in the nice houses over there and in the tour up houses over there. I don't know what direction I'm in, so I'm just pointing. All right? So don't, if you live in that direction, and that's not, the, I'm just saying. Don't get offended now. Those are people going to meet. This is the season that we're in. This is the season that City Beach Church is in. And we're going to say we love you. No conditions. City Reach Church will love first. We will give first and we will serve first. We're not waiting to be blessed. <laughs> I just lost a whole bunch of people. <laughs> We're not waiting to be blessed. Uh, it, newsflash You blessed already! You blessed already! You've been blessed! We're getting blessed right now. We're in the middle of our blessing. And the purpose to be blessed is so that we can be a blessing. So we ain't got to wait to be blessed. We already got it. We already overflowing. All we got to do now is let it out. We need to let out whatever's being poured in to let it go out to other people. We need to stop being so stingy with it. Our season is here. Our season is now. I'm talking about from the three-year-old to the 300-year-old. I don't know about the 300, but anyway, it sounded good in the moment. It's 6 and 60, right? 7 and 70, right? 80 and 8. 
Come on, somebody. <laughs> somebody give God praise for what's happening at City Reach Church right now. I don't know why you need permission to give God praise. You give him praise whenever it comes up. He's worthy. All right, let me be done. And let me close with the elephant in the room. <sighs> let me close with the elephant. Everybody understands the term elephant in the room? You know, like there's this big elephant in the room and nobody knows that he's actually, everybody ignores it. But he's there. Let me speak to the one, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube later or wherever it is I'm speaking to you at. Maybe it's right here. Let me speak to the one that is sitting there saying, but what about the sin I'm in? What about my failures? What about my mistakes? What about the trouble I'm in right now? Because we're in church. Ain't nobody in trouble, right? What about, what, what about my situations? What about my circumstances? What about the mess that I've made my life, that I've caused into my life? What about it? I'm going to lean forward. You ain't got to. Because I don't want you to tell on yourself. But to those who ask that question, haven't you been listening? This message is for you first. You can't give what you don't have. Hear me. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Simple instructions, and I'm done. If you know you're wrong, get it right. <laughs> uh, uh, I love my wrestlers because uh, every once in a while I'll get a, a wrestler who really is, who wants to learn a sport and learn the technique, and he turns around and says, Coach, what's the counter to that move? And I try to be really nice about it sometimes, and I just say, don't get in that move. You don't need a counter if you don't get in that position first. But for those of you that made the mistake and have made the mistake and you know you're wrong, get it right. <laughs> get it right. Get it right during your worship. Get it right when you come through these doors. Get it right. Get it right when you leave these doors. Keep getting it right. Even if you keep getting it wrong. His love is for you, too. For you, to. This isn't a new movement. It's not a me to you, too. No, it's just, it's just the way it came out. That was funny. His love, simply put, one word, unconditional. His love does not depend on your circumstances aligning to his will. It does not depend on you it does not depend on us getting into position to be accepted by him. His love for you and me is still unending, undeniable, unrelentless, undescribable, and still unconditional. I'm going to sit here for I'm going to stay, I'm going to enjoy that moment for me for a second. I have a hard time preaching a message that doesn't impact me too. And that one there, it's just overwhelming. He sim simply loved me long before I ever returned that love to him. He loved me first. And his love, unconditional. He loved us that way no matter He loved us that way. Now, it's your turn. Now, it's our turn. 
We love others just as they are. We love others regardless of the depth of their sin. We love others in spite of how they've treated us. Whatever but you got going on, leave it to the side. Because God has already taken care of your butt. He's already given an answer to your butt. You like that, huh, Kevin? It's funny. <laughs> When we love like this, things will change. It will change our home. It will change our workplace. It will change our schools. It will change our families. And it will change this church. If this church can change, we can change the world. One person at a time. Reach one. Teach one. To reach one. Amen. Please stand. Hmm. I don't know what to do now because I see that it's 12 o'clock. Y'all got a few more minutes for me? Can you give me a couple more minutes? Because we're, we're in this process and the leadership team, we're talking and, and we're talking about uh, that it's almost inevitable that will have to be in two two services, if not three, for at least a Sunday for for the Easter service. So we're talking about it. So they look. So so we're looking at me, or we're looking at each other, going. So how do we take a service and be able to fit them in with as long as you like to talk? But if you got, can I, can I get a couple more minutes from you? Because I want us to solidify this in worship. Before we go into the benediction, if you're watching right now live on Facebook Live, we just want to say thank you for watching. God bless you. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your opportunity to do so. Accept him. Receive him. He'll forgive you. That's the reason why he went to the cross for you and for me. God bless you as you go on Facebook Live onto your own thing. We're going to stay in worship. Just a couple minutes. Kadre, can you cue me up to 11? As soon as the Facebook Live comes off. And one of the things that I feel that is necessary, and I love worship, I, I really... I